everybody. Good afternoon and welcome to the Natural History Museum in London. Yes, we are back. We're open once again and really excited to be welcoming visitors into our building and galleries after being closed for quite a while due to the pandemic. If you'd like to visit, please book your online ticket free in advance. Uh, they're available at our website at nhm.ac.uk. My name is Connor, I'll be your host for today, and we are broadcasting live from an area of the museum that's not yet open to the public. We're following COVID safety and guidance. This is the brand new free display called Our Broken Planet, how we got here and ways to fix it. And it's included for free with your general admission ticket. Now the Our Broken Planet program consists of this display, which is opening tomorrow, but also free online events in which we talk to experts around the world and a host of online content on our website. If you'd like to find out more, please follow us on our socials and use the hashtag Our Broken Planet if you want to get involved in the discussion. Now, as I said, this area is not yet open to the public. It's opening tomorrow. So today, we're going to give you a sneak peek at some of the specimens and stories you can expect to see when you visit. And we're going to be joined by two museum experts that help put together this display. And in fact, the first one is right here. This is Louis. He's one of the curators that helped put together our Broken Planet. And remember, we are live. So if you have any questions for our experts, please pop them in the comments. Hi, Louis. How are you doing? Hi, Connor. Good, thanks. Can you tell us a little bit more about our Broken Planet? Sure. So yeah, our Broken Planet really explores how human beings' actions have shaped pretty much every aspect of life on Earth. Um, and in putting this together, we decided it's such a big subject that we're trying to divide it into, I guess, three broad themes. Um, the first of which, and, and, and this is what we're standing in now, this first uh, phase of opening, um, looks at our food production systems and agriculture and how we've shaped animals and plants to feed ourselves. Um, in two months' time, we're adding to this with another section that looks at how we source resources from nature. And we look at things like ivory, cotton, plastics. And then finally, in September, um, the full space will open up and we will add a section that looks at energy and climate. So quite ambitious and a lot of ground to cover. How did you decide what specimens would be displayed in here? Yeah, so we actually put this whole thing together during um, during the lockdown. So we didn't have a lot of access to, to the museum for, for that time. So the thing that we decided to do was, is that we have more than 300 research scientists based here at the museum. And so we asked um, them, we did an open call, we asked them to nominate particular objects and specimens that would tell fascinating stories. We had well over 100 submissions and we whittled that down to about 35 stories that we'll have on display in this gallery. So it must have been quite a challenge putting this together during COVID. And um, why now? Then why did the museum make the decision to put together this, this display at this point in time? Well, the, the museum launched a new strategy at the beginning of last year where we've kind of gone bold on declaring you know, a climate and ecological emergency action is needed. Um, and also, you know, in this year when we're recovering from COVID, we're thinking about how we live how we can build back more sustainably. And also there's loads of really important meetings going on. There's a meeting in Glasgow of the UN late, later this year talking about action that, that, that's needed on climate change. We just thought now is the right time to do something like this. I think uh, relating directly to that in this moment, I think we should get into some of the specimens on display. What is this in this case? What's this thing? Yeah, so we, we do actually have a few um, stories that, that look at COVID to start the, uh, the show. And this, um, it looks like a prehistoric creature. Indeed, it's been around for millions of years, but it is alive today. It's found on the eastern seaboard of the US. It's an Atlantic horseshoe crab. Um, so these incredible creatures have um, blue blood. Um, and the blood contains a substance that's incredibly valuable in terms of creating safe vaccines. So it's something that detects potentially toxic bacteria that can contaminate vaccines. Um, and so for a number of years, these crabs have been bled um, for used in vaccine production. This doesn't happen everywhere. So the, so the vaccines in the UK and across the EU that um, you know, some of us have been lucky enough to receive won't have um, in, involved this. But um, I guess what this story represents really is how we are heavily reliant on, on nature, but there's also an exploitative 
um, mm. aspect to this because the crabs themselves are bled. Um, some of them die as a result. So this is an organism that's basically affecting us all at the moment, and I'm sure not many people are aware of no. a story like this. I think we should move on to another specimen and something to caught my eye over there, something yeah. with big horns. What is in here? What is this? Yeah, so this magnificent beast is an aurochs. So it is the wild ancestor of the domestic cow. And we have a cow skull sitting next to it. So you can see um, the, the degree to which through selective breeding over 10,000 years, we've made cows um, significantly smaller and tamer than their wild descendants. Um, but the story that we tell here is, so the aurochs, one of the reasons for its extinction, one of the main reasons, was changes in the, in the environment caused by humans and, and hunting. Um, so we made this go extinct about 400 years ago. And then in the meantime, we've increased the numbers of um, cows on the planet to well over a billion uh, we eat around 300 million of them every year, and that obviously has transformed the face of the Earth, has a huge environmental impact from carbon emissions to habitat destruction. Wow, so this is a large creature that is now extinct. There's another large creature on display in here. There is indeed. On the other side of this, this gallery, so I think we should go have a look at that one next. So look at this magnificent thing. What is this one? Yeah, so this is the skeleton of a black marlin, um, and it was added to our collections about 125 years ago. And at this point, when it was um, swimming in the waters of, of the Middle East, um, it, uh, uh, there would have been many, many more large ocean predators, so things like marlin, swordfish, sharks, tuna, um, than there are today. Indeed, studies have shown that since industrialized fishing kicked off really in the, in the 1950s, species, uh, large ocean predators have declined by 90%. And if you take out um, the organisms at the top of food chains, that has a ripple effect through ocean ecosystems um, and is fundamentally changing the way that the oceans are, are functioning. And if we continue um, in this way, then the oceans of the future are going to be very different indeed. And this is a creature that uh, visitors to the museum might recognize, isn't it? This, this looks like something we've got in the main hall. That's right. So um, we, we have, a, uh, as we refer to it, a wet specimen, so one with flesh on it in, in the main hall as you come in the museum on the left-hand side. Yeah, so you can see that as well. It's amazing seeing the contrast between the, the wet specimen and this one, obviously, its skeleton. Um, I think that's the time we've got for this. So thank you so much for giving us so much information. And we've only scratched the surface, so people will have to visit to find out a bit more. But thank you so much, Louis. Oh, yeah. I think it's time to talk to our next museum expert. But for those of you just joining us, we are broadcasting live from the museum. This is our brand new display, Our Broken Planet, and is included with your general admission ticket, which you can book online in advance at our website, nhm.ac.uk. So let's head on over, and we are joined by Sylvia. So Sylvia is one of our museum scientists. Hi, Sylvia. Hi, Connor. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. So um, in this cabinet here, these are some specimens that you suggested for the display, aren't they? Can you tell us a little bit more about them? Sure. So these specimens are a bit different from the rest because they don't come from our collections, but these are actually living plants interacting by their roots with soil fungi. So something really special is going on in these dishes behind us because these plants and fungi, which I've grown actually in my lab here at the museum, are exchanging resources. So the fungi are sharing with the plants uh, important nutrients they've absorbed from the soil or jelly in the dish. And in return, the plants are giving the fungi sugars. So what you're seeing here is really one of the most important partnerships on Earth. Most plants interact in this way with fungi, and they've been doing so for hundreds of millions of years. So, so those, are, those are absolutely tiny. This, this relates to what you do here at the museum, doesn't it? Yes, absolutely. So sometimes people wonder why I spend my time growing fungi. <laughs> and the reason is like, well, what has happened is that with a team of collaborators recently, we discovered the plants interact with more fungi than we have known. So by growing this fungi with these plants, we want to learn more and the reason we want to do so is that because this partnership between plants and fungi are not just super important in nature, but they could also help us produce our food more sustainably. 
And what they mean with this is that although most plants can pair up with fungi, the way we farm today often has a very negative impact on mm. the ability of crop plants, take wheat for example, to form these partnerships. So my hope is that as we learn more about these fungi in the future, farmers might be able to add them to soils to help the crops absorb more nutrients and so that they will need a lot less fire chemi chemical fertilizers. So this could really help uh, farmers to grow more whilst protecting the environment. So it's such an important organism to our future and yet so small. And yeah, and most people don't realize that fungi are everywhere in the soil. Um, so yeah, super important. So this is great that we can highlight these sorts of stories and also your research with Our Broken Planet. Well, thank you so much for sharing with us. Um, that's been an absolute pleasure. Um, the pleasure is being all mine. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> okay then, so we're coming towards the end of our time here in Our Broken Planet. Uh, remember, this program is not just this free display, but also a host of online content and features on our website in which we explore some of the issues that we've spoken about today, but also other ones covered by the display. Uh, we've also got the free online event in which we talk to experts around the world. So keep an eye on our socials for when those are announced. For example, next Thursday, which is May 27th, we're talking about extinctions in the modern day. If you want to catch up on previous events, we have a YouTube channel with a playlist dedicated to our broken planet. We've already done quite a few, including yesterday's event about meat consumption, which relates to that Auroch story that Louis shared with us earlier. And remember, this opened tomorrow, but this is only one of three sections of the Our Broken Planet display. Future sections looking at the materials we use, the energy we consume, and their impacts on the planet will be opening up throughout 2021. So keep an eye out for when those are opening. And one last reminder, this is absolutely free, included with your general admission. If you'd like to visit, please do book online in advance on our website at NHM. .ac.uk. But I think that's pretty much all we have time for today. So thank you so much for joining us and we're looking forward to welcoming you back soon. Thank you very much and goodbye. <laughs>